Hello, everyone. Welcome to the channel of Terahertz Application Group. My name is Ren Chao Dong. I'm a PhD student in Axel Sightless Group in University of Cambridge. Today, I'll be talking about visualizing liquid transport through coated pharmaceutical tablets using terahertz pulsed imaging. So why are we interested in tablets? Tablets are the most common pharmaceutical dosage form, and they constitute about 90% of all the drugs clinically used. In recent studies, it also shows that a third of the patents of oral drug delivery technologies are still for tablets. And coatings for tablets are also quite ubiquitous. It can, be, uh, it can achieve a range of functions from simply make the tablet taste better to a specifically designed controlled release of uh, active ingredients. So why terahertz? Terahertz electromagnetic wave is sandwiched between microwave and infrared. Um, it can penetrate most pharmaceutical ingredients, as well as a wide variety of materials such as plastics, which makes it convenient for experiment design. It also gives rise to spectral features of chemicals that's been used in pharmaceutical products. It is also safe, and the measurement time uh, is usually relatively short. I would like to start by giving you an overview of what are the terahertz applications out there so far for the interest of pharmaceutical industries. So firstly, just like FTIR spectroscopy, terahertz can be used to identify chemicals. Molecules exhibit uh, different modes of motion in the terahertz range, and um, that usually are specific to uh, crystalline forms. Uh, drug molecules with different crystalline forms can affect its characteristics in the dosage form. And as an example, shown here, the spectrum of CBZ, which is a medicine used to treat epilepsy. You can see for the mixture of different crystalline forms, terahertz spectrum can uh, easily identify and even quantify them in the mixture. Next, terahertz can be used to sense the porosity. The porosity is a critical attribute of tablets because most of the tablets are made from powder compaction, so they are essentially a porous matrix. So the porosity of a tablet not only decides its mechanical strength, it also significantly affects the dissolution performance of the tablets. And a study has shown that there is a really high linearity between the refractive index in the terahertz range with the tablet porosity, which makes it feasible as a measure, measuring technique for the tablet porosity. And there is already recently developed a system that can be used as an atline sensor for a tablet porosity. It's called Terasoft. And next, terahertz can also be used to measure the thickness for, of the tablet's coating. Uh, it's the same concept as using terahertz to um, inspect the car paints uh, or the artworks. So basically, terahertz give rise to a reflections peaks from the buried layer interfaces. And there's also uh, already an automated scanning system available for scanning the whole tablets and giving you like a 3D mapping of the thickness for you to inspect the uniformity. For example, here, you can easily see the defects on the coating and the check the uniformity of the coating. And lastly, uh, on my list is uh, imaging liquid penetration through tablets, which is also the main topic of today. And I'll explain that in more details. So for our liquid transport experiment, we use terahertz TDS system Terapost 4000, coupled with a reflection unit polyscan with 18 millimeter focal lens. We also use uh, some supplementary experiments, uh, which is the TPI scan I just mentioned, and also X-ray CT. So how does the TPI works? Basically, we have our flow cell holding our tablets, and we have water flowing beneath it. At the same time, we shine terahertz wave from above. Wherever it encounters an interface where there is then contrast of refractive index, it gives rise to a reflection peak on the waveform. For example, here, this blue peak will correspond to the air tablet interface, and this red peak would correspond to the tablet water interface. And as the water goes up, penetrating the tablets, this red peak moves to the left, uh, closer to the top. If we show it in a live animation, it will look like this. As you can see, as time goes by, the water peak is gradually moving to the left. And if we plot all of the waveform together in a 2D plot, this is what we call a waterfall plot. We can clearly see the movement of the water. And if we track this water peak, we will be able to get the extracted kinetics information of liquid penetration. 
And so far, um, this demonstration has been shown on uncoated tablets. So there has already been uh, numerous uh, previous studies using this technique on uncoated tablets, including uh, my recent work, which focuses on the complex commercial formulations of tablets. Uh, basically, uh, there are some design of experiments, so you can compare the effects of concentration of different key ingredients on the rate of liquid penetration. For example, here, if you look at this blue curve, this is batch 5. Uh, it doesn't have any sodium chloride, and the rate of penetration is significantly slowed. And you can further quantify the results and compare them with different parameters of interest, for example, porosity or concentration of a specific ingredients. And the study also highlights the similarities and differences between the liquid penetration rate and the dissolution rate obtained from a standard pharmacopoeia test. So now moving on to coated tablets. Why are we interested in coated tablets? This is because in the pharmaceutical industries, um, they gauge the effectiveness of coating by a dissolution testing, which is essentially giving you a plot of a percentage drug release over time. However, as you can see here, dissolution is a complex process, especially for layered structure like coated tablets, um, and a number of physical steps is already taking place even before the first drug molecules being dissolved and detected. So in this study, we aim to explore more insights into this process. And for the first time, we apply the TPI liquid transport measurement on the coated tablets. We use uh, microcrystalline cellulose as the core. It is a very common excipient. And we use Opaja 2, which is an immediate released PVA-based coating formulations as the coating material. And we uh, use the vacuum compression molding system to apply the coating. We only apply uh, on one side for simplicity. We make the flat tablets for convenience. I would like to point out that there is an extra interface layer labeled here, because we believe while we melt the coating powder on top of the porous core, uh, some of them will bind to the core. Some of the coating materials will bind to the core and form a dense layer, uh, which we call the interface layer. Uh, it's not very commonly recognized in the field, and, and we will talk about this in more details later. So for the vacuum compression molding, we optimize all the parameters to minimize the heating effects and to uh, achieve a consistent quality of the coating. The core, MCC core, is prepared at a range of porosity from 10% to 30%. We use the X-ray scan to have a closer look at what it looks like inside. So this image on the left shows a cross-section from the center. You can see uh, the uniformity of the coating is OK, but the coating does look more porous than we expected. Um, and that's, that is due to um, the specific method we use to apply the coating. And now if we adjust the dynamic range of the X-ray image to highlight just the coating material, you can see that there is a loose layer of coating material on the inside of the tablet, and that is the evidence of the formation of the interface layer. Now let's recall the liquid transport data. Uh, if you still remember the waterfall plot, so this is for an uncoated MCC tablet, where you can see the water is traveling throughout right from the beginning. So now if we replace the tablet with the coated tablet, with the coated surface facing downwards, you can see before we can have this coherent transport, there is some more interesting features at the beginning, and that is due to the pre presence of the coating layer. And if we zoom in this area and examine closely of those waveforms, we'll be able to resolve some interesting features. So just after the water touches the coating layer, the water uh, firstly travel for a bit, then and it stopped by at the interface and it starts to decrease in amplitude, then a new peak emerges and traveling throughout the rest of the tablet. So that's basically the water traveling through the coating layer and then stop at the interface and dissolve in the interface. And then the peak water shows up at the core and traveling through the rest of the core. Here is a summary of all the stages we resolved, starting from the bottom. Uh, an easy way to differentiate all the differentiate and quantify all the stages is by uh, looking at the amplitude at the location of the interface. 
if we plot the amplitude versus time, you will see some uh, very distinct uh, discontinuity at T1 and T2, which corresponds to the time where water just touched the tablet and the time where the water reaches the interface. So after resolving the different stages, we'll be able to get the time and the thickness of each layer. They can all be extracted from the terahertz waveform. And from, from there, we can get the kinetics data of the liquid transport process. So here's an overview of the data in the bar plot. So each bar corresponds to a single tablet. And each colored section represents the time it takes for water to penetrate each layer. They are all plotted in the ascending order of tablet core. And also, a constant thickness is assigned for all the tablets so that the time value is readily comparable. Also, within each bar, you can uh, easily see how each layer is contributing to the total liquid penetration time. So if we look closely, you will see some of them has really short blue bar. That could imply that there are defects on the coating, or simply the coating layer has been degraded due to moisture. However, interestingly, a shorter blue bar not necessarily leads to a shorter red bar or yellow bar. Um, that could be explained by the formation of a gelling layer from, from the coating despite any defects. And the gelling layer is regulating the subsequent flow. And so the subsequent flow is not so strongly correlated to the penetration rate through the coating. And overall, you can see there is a negative correlation between the penetration time and the porosity. So the porosity, again, is playing uh, some important role even for the coating tablet. So now if we look at some correlation to porosity, uh, firstly, as expected, the rate through the tablet core is positively correlated to the porosity of the core. But you can see at the high porosity, due to the lack of structural in integrity, the rate data starts to lose consistency. But surprisingly, if now we plot effective rate through the co coating, uh, the effective rate is basically calculated by treating the interface layer and the coating layer as one layer. We can also see there is a strong positive correlation with the porosity. And that could imply that the quality and the functionality of the coating is actually affected by the core porosity. So if we want to apply the coating, how we manufacture the core would be important. And as I mentioned earlier, we also use the TPI scan as a supplementary experiment. So from this scanning, we'll be able to get a 2D map of the coating thickness where we can check the uniformity, which is quite OK. And on top of that, we can also get information on the refractive index from the reflections from the interface. For example, here, this is, the refractive, uh, this is a map of the refractive index of the coating layer. The refractive index of the interface layer can also be calculated by using the ratio of peak amplitude. And the average value of the 2D map were used for the later correlations. So now if we plot the rate through the coating versus the refractive index of the coating, you will see there is a, there is a nice negative correlation. So refractive index uh, essentially uh, represents the optical density of the material, and it can be seen as a matrix of density and the quality of that materials. So it makes sense that now the initial wetting rates in the coating layer can be predicted by the refractive index of the coating. And this adds up nicely to the synergy of different techniques, terahertz techniques in the pharmaceutical applications. And then if we plot uh, delta n, the change of refractive index from the coating layer to the interface layer, you will see that all of the delta n value are positive, which is suggesting a denser layer is formed. It's another evidence of the formation of an uh, interface layer. And it is also negatively correlated to porosity, suggesting that at a low porosity, there are more coating materials binding to the core. So to sum up, we have demonstrated that liquid transport across coated tablets involve multiple stages and depends on the property of different layers. And we show some strong evidence of the formation of the interface layer. And TPI is a really solid technique to quantitatively resolve all those features during the liquid transport.
Uh, some interesting findings from the results include we, uh, we noticed a faster penetration across the coating layer does not necessarily lead to a higher rate of subsequent transport because it's probably dominantly regulated by the gelling layers that's already formed. And the rate through the coating layer uh, appears to be strongly affected by the core porosity. And the surface microstructure is certainly playing a role on the coalescence of the coating material that affect the quality of the coating. And for the future work, we would like to test with the coating, uh, with more conventional coating method, which is film coating. And we would also like to test with different coating formulations and core materials as well. I would like to thank my group and all my founding buddies. And thanks for your attention.